What's up, what's up, what's up? It's Paris Hart and Jason Williams coming at you live for another episode of the Love With Podcast. You know, we don't cap on this show. It's straight facts. With that being said, y'all know it's the truth and nothing but the truth. So today, our artist is Dope Truth from Florida. What's good, what's good, what's good? So first things first, how would you say Florida really impacted your music or like really helped you go further in your career if it has? Well, Florida, I mean, I love being from Florida, but I don't get it a lot. a lot. I get like, a lot of people think I'm from up north. I guess it's how I, I don't know. I just get that a lot. But Florida is what it is, man. It's grimy out here. It's like, you gotta, you gotta learn how to hustle real quick at a young age. Facts, and Florida's just different. Like, the way y'all move down there is so different and so unique. And I think Florida be coming up with a lot of the lingo and they don't get the credit they deserve. Never, we never get the credit. But I feel like nobody gets credit for nothing these days. You know? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Nobody getting credit. Fuck the credit, pay the bills. Fact. <laughs> that's a fact. <laughs> so, how'd you come up with the name Dope Truth? Um, oh, I had this name for a while. I used to have a um, a website called dopehood.com. And I used to like post like new music, like unreleased mixtapes from like different artists and stuff. So then I just took that half of that name and it was like everybody called me Truth already. So it was like Dope Truth. Let's make it work. Dang. That, that's what's up. what you go as early in your career? Because we saw that you were a DJ in high school. Was it still like DJ Dope Truth or was it? Nah, nah. I had to, when I was DJing was during my uh, my Taylor Gang days. When I was, I thought I was, I thought I was Wiz. <laughs> I was running around calling myself DJ Taylor and everything. <laughs> <laughs> had the Converse's, the, the the camo shorts. All <laughs> that, 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 that was that was that was that was a time. Man, that's what's up, and you can always tell that you're on your drip. And you you making sure that you come out dressed to impress. So speaking about that, you have your own clothing brand. What was it like right. getting that set up and structured and seeing it blossom to where it is today? Um, getting it started was like I didn't wake up like like yo, I want to make some clothes. Like it was like I'm just the type that whatever, like I'm always all about music. So anytime I put together a project, a song, or anything to release, I'm like, yo, what's the best way to like market it? So around the time, it was like this is the time where like I was like focusing on like Nipsey Hustle, like watching his grind, and we all know he was selling the shirts out the trunk. So I was like, "Yo, I dropped a, my first like this was like my first like debut mixtape like after like you know testing the waters, and I had a project called No Investor. So I'm like, "Yo, I got to put this on some shirts and like some lighters. I got to just pass it out so people know I'm dropping some new music." And I ended up putting it on some shirts, and everybody was like, "Yo, like this is hard," and not even thinking about my music. So I was like, "Yo, like maybe I should just you know start something else." another clothing line that represents what we doing. Like, cause I had no investor, no manager, I had everything off the muscle. And you, you know, we always talk about like how you can make it without, you, you really need a strong support system, but if that work is there and that consistency is there, you really could do it yourself. Right. It, it really just takes that. So from starting, have you seen the support system grow from like, okay, I got clothes booming now. I got my music popping out. Like, okay, now I got this fan. Now I got this connect. Right, right. Yeah, definitely, definitely. What you start to realize as a creative, I won't even just say artist, as a creative in general, is like, uh, not like, everything you do is gonna grab a new fan. Like, like you might do something that a fan that you already have don't like, but it's gonna grab you a new fan. So it's like, just being creative and not staying in a box are always gonna meet new people. It's like, if you're in a, if like, so, like I'm in the dogs, so I go to a lot of dog shows. I meet people that become my fans just off meeting me at a dog show. They never heard a song. They're like, oh, yo, you cool. Oh, you do music? Let me go check it out. So like whatever your personality is, whatever you into, like find fans within that. Like, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and that makes sense too, because whenever you're doing something like you're creating art or something, you're putting yourself into it. So if you are doing what you like and you're around people that like what you do, obviously they're going to like the art that you put out because the art is just another representation of you. It's another piece of you. So you know, right. it's like, why not be yourself? That's how you're gonna grow your fan base authentically. That's how gonna grow as a creative authentically. You know, if you're not gonna be yourself, you can't grow as you. Exactly, and it's never a surprise. It's like, if you wake up one day and post something, your fan's not gonna be surprised. Like, oh dang, I didn't know he was into that. Like, like they already know you, like, no surprises. Facts, and 
it, it really kind of just grows the bond between you and your fans and you and the people you connect. Cause then that, that builds a topic that they're like, oh shoot, I like fashion. Now I can talk to him about fashion or I like music. I like dogs. It just makes it feel like it's not a fan no more. It's a support in a gr- just a group of people that are rocking with you. Exactly. And that's exactly why, that's what I like to think about it. I don't even like to call them fans. Like, because I feel like the same way. I'm, I'm fans of a lot of people myself, but you got me? Like, it's all about supporting. Facts. So was there anyone that when, when they came up to you and was like, yo, I mess with your music or I mess with your clothes, that you was just like, dang, you checking it out? Okay, okay. Uh, Yeah, to be honest, it was like, man, it's probably about a year ago now. But it was maybe three, four in the morning. Like, my phone was ringing, 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 ringing. And I mean, like, I'm with my chick. And <laughs> I'm with my chick. And I'm, like, trying to, like, cut the volume down. Like, who the fuck you calling me right now? Like, not now. Like, you about to get me fucked up. Right. <laughs> or whatever like that but um but i'm like fuck it, let me just answer this shit end up being one of my homegirls in atlanta she was at a concert she's like yo I, I ended up coming to this show i ain't have nothing to wear it's cold i just put on a hoodie and ross just stopped me like he wants one now like he wants one now like being mad dramatic tell me like rick ross wanted a hoodie so you know me it's three in the morning i'm like man he probably wanted you like you know what i mean like <laughs> <laughs> You got me, I'm like, man, he wanted you, man. I'm gonna holler at you in the morning, but that's dope. You feel me? I didn't throw it under the rug, but I was just like, that's dope. Went to sleep and I woke up and then she called me like, it was like four hours later, like seven in the morning. She's like, yo, I was like, yo, like he's not playing. He call- His manager just called me like, he wants like this size, this size, this color, this color. So then I'm like, oh, this shit might be for real. So, you know, I got up, put the pack together, whatever, immediately sent it to him. And then when I seen him actually take a picture with it, I was like, yo, that's crazy. like. I, I didn't, it's so easy. Like the world's so small, you never know how somebody might get your stuff. That's why it's always best to, like we said, network and support people. Yeah, like whenever we have uh, artists who are like uh, coming into the industry, but honestly, at any level of the industry, it's just kind of like, yo, like these are real people that I have like close connections to, or at least I know somebody that knows somebody. Or like, you're never too far removed from the people who, you know, people like idolize or who like the, the celebrities are. And it just really goes to show you like, yo, like, you never know when you got to be on your game. You never know when you just have to be able to, you know, give out some stuff. Because now if exactly. you wasn't ready, if you didn't have your, your packages able to go, you would have just been, you know, shit out of luck. Right, you know, exactly. Like people, the only thing I have to tell people all the time is that luck is when you're prepared and when the opportunity meets. Because it's like, listen, you have the opportunity, you were ready, boom, you were quote unquote lucky. But really, you're just doing your thing. And that's just part mm-hmm. of being in the business. Right, making it happen regardless. No, I agree with you. Last September was Honey was released. What was it like getting into that and really feeling out the vibe of how, how you write your music? Okay, well, um, this last 2021 is like I dedicated that whole year to like I was doing a lot of songwriting. So it's like I was always making music, cooking or whatever, but I wasn't really focusing on like packaging nothing up, putting nothing out. I was just like, yo, I got a lot of songs about to be released. Let me get my credits together because I am an independent artist. You got me? So it's like I just build my relationships throughout the industry. So it's like, I'm like, all right, let me focus on the right. And so I did, I ended up like linking up with uh, Dusty Locane. I don't know if you ever heard of him from uh, New yeah, York. Yeah, we from New York. <laughs> oh, so yeah, we all outside, you feel me? So I ended up linking up with Dusty or whatever like that. So he just, that whole album, that was a great process, putting it together. We traveled the world, like, you know, like him becoming a new artist, like, you know, ignoring the politics. Like me actually like being from Florida, like, getting hit to the drill sound and actually linking with him and like like yo this he don't sound like what they think he sound like he's his own person so that was dope i ended up linking with rotimi uh don q fat boy SSC. like just end up creating the good music so I, I i found myself like liking the role of like yo it doesn't matter if i'm the one saying it if he's saying it it's like being in a room with creatives and putting together a project and then the world loving it is like the best thing in the world so after doing that i'm like all right it's time for me to drop my album. So that was the first single off the album that I'm about to drop now called I Told You So. And Honey Ways, first single off of it. Hey, so when should everyone out there be expecting the album to drop? Uh, Honestly, like the second week of February. Like that's what I'm aiming for. Second, third week of February. Like pre-order should be ready, like uh, available like on the first. So we just, you know, put packaging everything up together, making a good rollout and I'm excited. What's one thing that you notice about like your writing or you're working with other people that's like gotten better over time the more that you, you know, being in these, uh, you know, different and new spaces? Um, as an artist, like um, you always try to, well, at least me, I always try to be like my biggest critic. So like, I've always made records and like have people around and they're like, oh, yo, this is fire, this is fire. It's so, you know, like everyone's boosting you up. 
So then you might, and like, as when you really critique your own music, you know what you think could go and you know what can't without being like, yo, everything is good. So actually when I started being in a different rooms with other artists that I know the world praises, and I started saying things and started doing, just being me, and I'm realizing, and then they feeling the same way as somebody that's been next to me my whole life, like that I thought was just telling me something was good. So I'm like, it's like that, you know, like, oh damn. So I, I, I really am that nigga, like that shit, you feel me? Like, it's like, it makes you, it makes you when you step in the booth to like anything I say, it's like with confidence, it's like, I'm not like, yo, how that sound? I'm like, yo, that's what I want to say. All right, next. Like, even if someone says like, oh, I think you should say, yeah, that's cool, bro. But uh, I'm, I'm saying what I just said. Like, you get me? Like, <laughs> cause I know for yeah. sure, like I'm doing what I got to do. You got me? So that's that confidence that comes with it. That's why I tell people to just be as creative as you can and like, don't hold yourself back. That just keeps building to your resume. Cause now it's like, okay, not only is he doing clothes, not only is he making his own music, but he he's writing songs for these, these top tier artists. So it's like, it's kind of like you're just building that resume and that portfolio. So as soon as you walk in the room, it's like, okay, this guy isn't a Joe Schmo off the street. He has these accolades to him. Right. And the respect is there from the jump. Exactly. Exactly. And, the, and the, honestly, it's like that shit's been, it's been built over years. It's like, it's not over, it's not an overnight process. It's like, it's a lot of no's. It's a lot of yeses. It's a lot of yeses that you hear that where you were just told yes because you was there. And then when you leave, it's a different conversation. It's like, you learn, it's like, I tell everybody, like, you gotta fall in love with the process. Like, I get DMs all the time, like, yo, bro, like, yo, can you link me with this person? Can you link me with that person? And then linking you is like, that's one phone call. But it's really like, when you get in front of them, what, like, what work are you gonna show them that you've been doing? Are you gonna say, I got this one song with a million views? Or are you gonna show them 500 songs with like a, a, a hundred views? You never know who, what they wanna see. They might wanna see you on your thousand song because they know they can make a million views, get to it, but not your first, like, you know, you never know. You just got to keep working, bro. That's why I tell somebody, there's no, it's no one formula. Yeah, no, definitely getting a lot of no's to be discouraging, though. Like, imagine just being in the game for so long, and I know that there are a lot of people out there who get no after no after no. Like, what's one thing that you did that kind of, like, kept you on your game and, like, in your zone, you know, to bounce back from those? Um, The only thing I could say is uh, it probably was a pro. I mean, it probably helped me or probably, like, held me back was, after, after, like, to be honest, like, after me, I'm the type of person, like, like, I don't even act like asking my mom for something because when she say no, I'm gonna be hurt. Like, cause I know I would have never said no to you. Like, you got me? So after you build relationships with people, you start to realize like, it's no need to ask nothing. Cause if you tell me, no, I'm not gonna like the results of that. So how about I put in this work? And then you, they just, it's the office is just gonna come to you to the point where you're the one saying yes or no. Like, as long as you asking somebody for something, they have the option to turn you down. When they ask you, you now you got control. So like whenever you get into that mindset, you understand like, yo, if I don't ask nobody for nothing, I can never hear it. No, I'm just doing what I want to do. And you got to respect it or don't respect it. You got me? So that's what, you, that's what I've learned at least. Yeah, when you're definitely in your zone, <laughs> the tables turn, kind of like with your last project, uh, when your previous project was. Speaking of, I really fuck with the song Play to Win. Can you talk a little bit more of like what that recording was like? And like going through that process, that, you know, <laughs> that was, yeah, that is my that's my vibe too. Um, I mean the same. Like if you listen to my music, it's like, bro, I try to keep it as like, like as like as real and as like simple as you can. Like it don't take a genius of like what is, what does he mean by that? Like you got me. It's like no tricky words, no nothing that like means something that I but I was saying something else. Like I try to keep it as simple as possible, and I was just really like I'm saying playing to win. It's like you got me like. Like, the, every from word to word, like, it's a play to win. Niggas, watch how I move, yeah, yeah. You feel me? Like, <laughs> the whole thing is just like, I'm just really talking about real life. Like, that's all we gotta do is just play to win, bro. When, when did you really find that, that of like, okay, I'm gonna a, I'm a be unapologetically myself in music? Or was it always like that? Cause I, I know when I first got into music, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try rapping. I'm gonna try doing a little bit of, you know, getting out of my lane and getting uncomfortable. but. I know some artists really grow into themselves and I know some artists like from day one, they just know what they're going to do, where they're going to go. What path were you on? Uh, I'll say it was a little difficult for me because I didn't want to be an artist that like, when I started, when I started rapping was like 2013, 14 ish. And around that time, this is like before Fetty Wap, if you think about it, this is like, this is like, this is like before anything. So around that time was a, in my, where I was, it was like a lot of like, I would say like everywhere, like Chicago was, you feel me? Like a lot of drill type music, but it was like down South was more like a dance, dance bop type bop. 
So I never wanted to make an artist, with, I mean, a song where I felt like it could only be played in a club, like, or it could only be played, or like, I can't play this for my mom, or I can't play this for my grandma. I wanted to make music that I was like, once I get in the car with whoever I could get in the car with, I could play. So it's like, I was always trying, trying different shit out. And I feel like that, like it helped me and it helped, it didn't help me at the same time. Cause your first impression, a lot of people hold on to that. So when I first started making music, I dropped some, I dropped different things. I was trying different things out. So a lot of people were like, uh, I don't really, uh, I'm not really jacking it. Uh, like, uh. Then it's like a different sound, different sound, different sound, different sound. I'm never giving nobody a chance to like, get to like, yo, that's like where something's playing and like, oh, that's true. So I feel like I call that people like trial and error. It's like shooting in the gym, like practicing your free throws. It's like, that's why I tell a lot of artists don't force putting music out until you feel confident with your music. Because nobody has to ever, that's why a lot of rappers, they drop a song today and they're like, yeah, I started rapping for six months. Like, bro, come on, like, let's be real. You've been like, you took it serious for six months, you packaged a song together in the last six months that worked. But you, they usually were rapping longer than that. It just wasn't making sense, but they didn't put nothing out for nobody to hold that against them, you got me? So right, yeah. I tell everybody, it's like, I don't, I don't think you should wait and all forever, but I think you should like take your time, find your lane, package the music the right way, especially with how it is now. It's like, it doesn't take a year for people to like find you. Back then you had to put music out, go around the world, pass the CDs out. You couldn't waste a day. Now you can put a song online and that shit go crazy overnight. So you really got to just take your time and create the best thing. Yeah. It's always about finding your, your pace and your momentum, right? Like you never want to be that one artist where it's just like, yo, like I can't wait to release three albums a year. Or I can't wait to two albums. Are, are you ready to do two albums a year? Can you do like, have you made the songs for that? Or is that just like a, a what you're just saying? Like you never want to hold yourself to like a vision that's not, you know, realistic. That's not you. Like if you have some stuff in the vault, you got some stuff you want to release, then you make the plan. It's like making plan without a foundation. What are you going to fall back on? You're going to throw your dreams in the air. They don't land nowhere. So exactly, me. exactly. And that, I think that just comes with like being an artist because I can remember like my first project from to now, like it's like my first project, if whether it was seven or 13 songs, I can't remember, but those were seven or 13 songs that I had just like I made. Like, so that's why that was a project. And then you fast forward to today where it's like I got a hundred songs and I just I'm picking 14 songs. It's like it's different levels to where you actually gonna get the best quality music versus like yo this is the this is what i did the last three weeks out of these seven songs one is good but i'm giving it the all to the world because i want to make a cd like i want to put a project out like i tell a lot of artists if you can't get a single hot like then it's, it's really hard to get a tape hot like if you, one song can't get hot they're not gonna listen to 15 songs so it's like you really got to figure out like what your fans like for me some fans don't want to hear no music they just want you to drop a video every time you drop a song like they just want to see a video like like everybody got different fans. Like, you got me. Yeah, that's that's a fact. And you kind of have to learn where where you're gonna go through music as trial and error. Cause once you get into it, it's I mean, I feel like you could tell who's seasoned in the game and who's not based on when they give you a project and they give you a song. Cause once you once you're seasoned in the game, you're like, oh, the production, the words, you start hearing all these different things, and you're like backtrack to to looking at yourself. That's why I didn't pop off when I thought I was hot and I thought that I, I was making music, but then it, it kind of works because it weeds out everyone who's not really, not really an artist or not really meant to be an artist. Cause there's, exactly. some, there's some people out there listening and I'm sorry to say, but music is just probably not for you. You could go to lawyer, you could be a lawyer, go to law school, you could be a doctor and go to school, but music isn't just something that you get in the booth and you're going to go diamond overnight and have all the girls, the money, everything you want. It's exactly. that it's that slow grind. And I mean, me and Jason, when we heard your music, we were like, yeah, he, he's been working. This this dude been working for music. He's been working with clothes. And what, what was that really like work ethic for you? Like when you first got. Uh, in well, I, I, over time, it's like you be, it's, it becomes like I say, you fall in love with the process where you don't feel comfortable if you're not doing something like right? you got I me. Mean, that's why I'm like, I'm kind, I don't really like a lot of people. They like, yo, who's this? Like, to be honest, bro, like, like. I didn't even go to, I didn't even like search in it. Like I didn't even search the podcast. I didn't even look at the numbers. Like I didn't do none of that. It's just like, yo, somebody wants to talk to you about what you do every day. Let's talk about it. It's like a lot of people pick and choose what they should do. Like, oh, I'm, I, should, I don't want to do that. Or I done did this and that. Like, bro, I don't care about none of that. It's like, if anybody has something to do with what I got going on, I'm trying to support what you got going on. And I feel like that's the only way to win. It's like, 
you can't like, bro, I was like, I, to be honest, I had like, I'm was running around all day, but in my head, I'm like, yo, I got something to do, but I'm treating it just like how I treat when, uh, when uh, somebody flies me to New York for a writing session or like when, or when somebody like how Ross called me, I treat it the same way. Like it don't matter you big or small. Cause I don't know who like, Right now we're having a conversation. I still don't know who I'm speaking to. Like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, you don't know who yeah. you're speaking to. What if what if tomorrow somebody's like, yo, um, yo, you know anybody with like a dope podcast? Like, I'm trying to invent, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, conversation is switch. Like, so you always gotta treat everybody with the utmost respect and do what you gotta do as an entertainer, your job. Like, I feel like it's so simple. People make it real difficult. Like, it's so simple. Like 100 percent Like you want you're doing something that you love. We are literally doing a podcast about talking to people about what they love. That's as simple as a business. The business is dead ass just the love of it. Like, if you love doing what you're doing, we are in business together. If we could be on camera together, we're doing it. We're making partnerships. You feel me? All the other stuff that comes with, you know, trying to trying to maximize the opportunity, trying to get something out of it, you know, all the extra, you know, unnecessary, like, back and forth and stuff. It's not something that, uh, at least for, for me, and I feel like a lot of people from my generation, like, we're just not with. Like, a lot of the young people are really with the authentic kind of, like, sign. Everybody wants to be real. Everybody wants to only, you know, link up with people that's real. So, like, when you create the space for that in your business, when you create the space for that in your system, and there's only, you know, real space to do real things. Like you said, you treat everything like this the same because that's your system. And your system is, you know, is solid. Exactly. And, you know, one, I more appreciate you for that, you know, definitely for giving us the time, you know, and just, you know, letting us build while you build. Bro, I'm a like I'm I'm a big I'm a big believer in like energy. I'm real spiritual. So it's like I don't ever believe like I'm gonna be placed in a position or stare down the wrong like no one's gonna tell me to walk down that street. Like and to me, I actually walk down the street if I don't need to. So like when you move right. like that, like I always believe like it's a reason why. Like you got me, it's a reason why this interview is happening. And I guarantee you guys. I get, I like, bro, like, I don't think nothing around me is, is it going to be successful. So I guarantee we're going to do this interview two, three years from later from now in a whole different situation. And it's going to be, you're going to be like, you know what I mean? Like, bro, it's nothing but leveling up. You got me? So I see that for everybody, especially when it comes in my inner circle. I'm like, oh, to be honest, bro, like, trust me, yo, God love you. You blessed. Cause that's just the way I feel about anything that come my way. I'm like, oh, okay. So that must be good energy. You blessed. Like, that's how I think about it. Like I don't just I don't deal with no bull. Like you feel me? No BS. That's a fact. And I mean, me and Jason always talk about that. Like even coming in the game, an artist saying, "Hey, can you plug me in?" Like, "Hey, dope. You know, I'm doing this or that. Can you plug me in?" Yada yada yada. Is way it comes off kind of messier than saying, "Yo, I'm gonna show dope how like I actually work, how I'm getting it, how I'm grinding in the studio, how I'm doing everything I gotta do." And then you're gonna you're gonna extend your hand just like okay I see you working hard I'm I see what you're doing, and I feel like you you deserve a level up so I'm gonna do that and once you surround yourself with people that aren't asking for handouts that don't feel like they're entitled to anything and who are really just grinding in their own lane, once that chemistry is there that the sky's the limit the support system going going all level up. Absolutely, absolutely. That's exactly how it is, bro. One hand wash the other. It's been like that. Facts and. Speaking about one hand washing the other, whenever you write songs, you have to perform them. So which one do you feel you like more? It's funny because every time I watch interviews and if somebody asks that question, I, I ask myself the same thing over. And I don't, th I think, I, to be honest with me, I would say performing it just because of like, you get to actually see how it touched people, but it's just a different vibe when you're actually creating the music because it's like over time you start to understand like, a lot of people will tell you like, oh, I know what that song, like I knew that was the hit. Like, because over time you end up knowing like exactly how you feel when a song is good. Like, it's weird to explain it, but. So I think it's, I think it's like, it's one of those ones that goes up in the air. It depends on the song, really. Some songs, it was real quick. You did it in 15 minutes. And every time you perform it, people like fall out. You got I me? Mean? So it's like, you would say performing yeah. it better. But some songs you cried in the booth, like. And when you when you perform it, people are happy, but they don't even know you was you was hurt in the motherfucking booth. <laughs> you got me. So it's it switches up, man. I think just creating in general is just a blessing. Any performances that stick out to you, or you had like a favorite moment at a show? I was just like, wow, like that that was gonna stick with me for a minute. Jeez, this would be a lot of a lot of um, a lot of fucking a lot of moments. But uh, 
to be honest, bro, I, I have more fun at shows with artists that I like help out with their music versus my, like when I'm performing. When I'm performing, I'm like, I'm like somewhere else within my head, like enjoying my music. But when you help out on a project or a song, or even if it's just a beat and you watching that artist performing and you see the fans go crazy, you really get to sit back and be like, yo, wow, like I'm a part of something that like, like that shit's crazy how it's affected people. Like, so I think that I like, I enjoy that more. I think I enjoy that more. Just being a part of uh, uh, a successful project or creating something with other creatives. Like, I think that's just dope. Yeah, man. Definitely when, like, things are, like, bigger than me and, like, I'm, like, a part of, it's, it's, it makes me feel like, yo, like, I'm I'm contributing. Like, I'm part of the wheel that's making this this thing go. And that's yeah. just something that I, I feel like, you know, really boosts my confidence. Even when I, I help out with, like, at my job or, like, even on this podcast, it's just like, yo, like, I'm part of the, these, we're really going somewhere. And like, people are enjoying how I'm helping. It makes me feel like, okay, I know what I'm doing. Even if I don't, it makes me feel like I do. No, nah, exactly. It's a day, bro, a day at a time, bro. Like, but you're doing it. So you only, you feel me? It's only going, you're only going to get to that, that last day. Like, you feel me? Success. It's real simple. That's, yeah, so that was fire. That was a bar. You're doing it. You're going to do it every day <laughs> to get to that last day. Last day. <laughs> it's real simple, you know, for real. So I know you spoke about the album. Really, what was it like getting writing that and really just getting the rollout and everything a part of it lined up? Um, I'll say the project. Well, well I, the reason why I think this project is like more dope than anything I've created is for like the main reason I brought up a while back uh, a while ago was what I was saying is like none of these songs was made for this project. This is like pick. This is like hand picked out amongst of uh, a whole bunch of different environments, different feelings, different emotions, different locations. And it's like all master put together to sound like one bot, like a body of work. That's just like, it brings you everywhere versus like, you know, actually listen to something that sounds or like everything sounds the same. You got me? So I'm really like just delivering a message of like the title. It's like, I told you so. So I've been saying the same thing since the beginning. You got me? And like I said, every day it's a new fan. It's a new fan, but day one, it was no fans. So you got me. So it's pretty much like, you know, people that's been around from day one, but it's waiting to now to click play. It's pretty much like I told you so. It's like that last ha ha. Why you listen and support? <laughs> you got me. So it's like it's like one of those things, you know, yeah, but 100%. it's just dope. You know, it's always good to, to vision bigger than where you are because you never know where you're going to land. You can always bring that vision with you when you land. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You got to You got to think big. Yo. You can't even think small. Like can't even think small. And I, I think my mom for that, too. She's a big influence on me. But anytime my mom, like any birthday or anytime, like, one of, you know how the shooting stars or anything where it was involved with making a wish. My mom always was like, don't wish for nothing little. Don't wish for nothing little. Like she always whispered that. And I never really got it. Like she always was like, don't wish for nothing little. Don't ask for nothing little. Anytime I prayed, she was like, if you want some shoes, ask for a shoe store. Like. Don't ever ask for nothing little. And I'm like, because you're selling yourself short. Like, and I didn't get that to now, like, really, <laughs> to be honest. Like, yo, you can't, you can't, you can't be like, yo, you can't, you can't, you can't want a little anything. Like, you just gotta want everything and whatever comes with it. Hey, so where do you see yourself in the next five years? Where what's the peak that you wanna hit? Five years from now, to be honest, bro, I'm like uh like a business exec. I got multiple companies. In music and without outside of music, I see the no investor merch collabing, being in millions of stores. You got me being like a day to a day to day, like necessity, like just how you pick up a essentials jacket. You're like, yo, I need a no investor jacket. Like, so that's what I see. Like being a, just a businessman. Like I'm like I'm a creative, but like at the end of the day, like I know how to handle business. So it's like, that's what I see for myself in five years, is being the biggest, biggest biz, music businessman there is, to be honest. Yeah, no, that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, besides the uh, album that you got coming out, you got any shows coming out with this year or anything you got planned to like go on tour or anything like that? Um, To be honest, it's just a lot of uh, behind the scenes work coming out. Uh, mm -hmm. My boy Fat Boy dropping uh, The Biggest Heart, I believe. He's dropping around like the second week of February as well, like the 14th or 15th. I'm excited for him. He's been putting in a lot of work. I know y'all probably from, he's from Jersey. So y'all, you know, I know y'all from yeah, Fat Boy. Fat Boy says right? Yeah, actually, facts. he just, he went up to my boy's um dispensary like last month. Yeah, facts. He got the lung smacker going. Shout out my boy Fat Boy. Yeah. He's another one, like, 
you you get on get in a room with him, you understand what hustling and hard work gets you. Like when you beat the odds. Uh, just a lot of people, bro. Like uh, Jim Jones and Mano dropping uh, the Lobby Boys. You got me. I was I was uh, blessed to blessed to be in the same room with a lot of records they created on there. Like just learning and studying the game, bro. Like I, that's why that's why I get my rush from it. music. To me, is dope and everything, but it's actually like being able to study and learn the game and be the best me. So just being blessed and able to, you know, be in that environment, bro. That's just what, what I'm looking forward to for the rest of the year. Putting the pieces together. Bet that. Um, where can where can our listeners go and find you at on social media? You'll find me on Instagram at Dope Truth, D-O-P-E-T-R-U-T-H. Same thing on Twitter, underscore before the Dope Truth. Snapchat, I'm smoke hard. You know, I'm, I stay smoking. Snapchat private, though, you know, I, I'm, I'm, there's too many apps to be on these days, right? <laughs> If you got time to yeah, check every app, it. if you got time to check every app, your bank account probably is not looking right. But you know, we got every app. But if you really <laughs> need to find me, the email is the best way to contact me. I'm on there every day, clicking refresh, and I'm on Instagram. That, you can fly, that, you can get the merch on noinvestor.com. We got a t-shirt on right now. Mm-hmm. We got t-shirt hoodies, joggers, the whole nine, rolling trays, everything. Noinvestor.com. That, that and everyone listening out there, me and Jason definitely gonna cop some of that. So you gotta cop that too. Like I'm telling you, some some of y'all, I don't want I don't want to say nothing rude, but I seen some of y'all asking for hugs. If you get this no investor, you don't gotta ask for no hug. The girl's gonna come to you. <laughs> Facts. You're gonna ask no leave you alone. <laughs> you alone. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> soon as soon as they see that shirt, they're like, what what does that mean? It's really gonna start the conversation. If y'all got problems with females, come starting the conversation, the shirt will definitely start the conversation for you. Just let them know Ross got a shirt. Ross got a shirt. <laughs> don't, don't ask me no questions. Yeah, it's that simple. <laughs> Tell them, so, all they got to say is Google it. Google it, and I'm going to put you on game. <laughs> With that being said, like, thank you for being on the show. Yeah, bro, thank yeah, y'all. Thank energy. y'all. It's your boy Dope Truth, and I'm tuned with the Love of It podcast.